and this is this is obviously being discussion discussion online. I want I want to get your chance to like kind of explain your mindset and your thought process on this. Because when you have the Black Panthers and we have Fred Hampton, they work with the Young Patriots. Um, they was mostly focused on stopping anti racism and, st- mm-hmm. and fighting against white supremacy. So it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't. Uh, I, I mostly just want to give you a chance to like uh, like explain your mindset, and I'm not sure where mm-hmm. I come from. Uh, and I actually had a different stance on this than a lot of people do. And a lot of people can get mad at mm-hmm. me all they want, but I think I can explain really well. And I, I want to make sure I get this in before you before you leave here. My stand, people got mad at me because I said I am willing to work with anyone if, if on my terms. They got mad at me for saying that. I know. People got mad at you at me at you because you interviewed the Boogaloo Boys. And I I'm, just I'm, interviewed I'm, them. Yeah, I'm gonna give you a fair chance to explain to me. I'm not trying to <laughs> I did not I'm not trying to get you, but they they're they saying that you shouldn't have platformed someone yeah. with such a stream racist. Uh, ideology yeah. and what the white what the patriots what they was about was about fighting white supremacy uh right. actually so we'll, i'm gonna explain my stance and I'm ha- i won't have you explain yours and that's and it's just literally just that be that simple so my stance is i live in a red state i have no choice but to talk to conservatives I, i'll get your jv response after jamie as well i notice the people who get mad at people who who propose we work with conservatives look at their location jimmy it's always the same spot in New York, California, Brooklyn, <laughs> like they always live in deep blue areas. I sold cars in Kansas. I have no choice but to talk to conservative guys. No choice. There's not it's not an option for me to ignore if I actually want change in my community. So one thing I have, and to back up my point, why I not I wasn't mad at you at the outrage. I just want to address this. I know people want me to ask you this, but I, the reason why I wasn't mad is because I am a big advocate of uh, ballot in, direct ballot initiatives. Throughout the course of this conversation, we explain why we don't trust politicians. They're not the squad, Bernie Sanders, they're not gonna fight for you. So I think now our thing, we need to focus on ballot initiatives. Because in Missouri, we passed med- medical uh, marijuana, we increased the minimum wage, we got Medicaid expansion because of that. So if you are one of the people who lose your mind at people who propose to work at conservatives, let me propose a very simple scenario for you. Let's say you are working on an initiative to pass. Uh, a Medicaid expansion bill, which will help my grandma, help the black community out, save countless lives, right? You have, you need 1,000 signatures. Let's keep it, the numbers even, to keep it simple. You need 1,000 signatures. You got 980. And then a group of Boogaloo boys said, hey, I will sign your petition. And you get Medicare expansion passed. Are you telling me you would not take their signatures? My position is, if you are, if you want not to take that their signatures to actually improve people's lives because you're like, oh, I can't work with them, you are a deeply unserious. You're a deeply unserious person. Now, with that said, that's what I mean when I say work with them because I feel like that I feel like there's been mudding in the waters on this issue. But it's like, oh, you want to work with the far right racists? You want to work with the boogaloo uh, racists? I'm like, what that? What does that mean? What does that mean? What, what does that mean? I could get, that's that why I give you the political example because that political example right. is a real life offline right. example of what we talk there's about. A, the whole sorry, exactly sorry right. Jim, I went long, but I will give you your thoughts here real quick. The the whole yes. red brown alliance thing is an internet contrived nonsense that doesn't exist. <laughs> if you're an actually an organizer, I never seen it. I'm around lefties all my time. I don't know anyone who's like, oh, I can't wait to work with fascists. No, that doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. So what I'm telling you is I want to work with them to help pass my ballot initiatives. That's it. I'm not pushing no racist agenda. None of that. But with that said, that's what my stance is. I want to ask you, I want to give you a chance to clarify if people were like, Jim Dore advocate working with racists. He don't understand the history of the Black Panthers. This is your chance to clarify that. This is where I stand. Where, where, where do you stand on this issue, Jimmy? So uh, every person I've met who criticized me for interviewing uh, Magnus, uh, didn't watch the interview. Every single person. No one who ever watched that interview criticized me because I don't know if you know, during that interview, I said, I'm interviewing this guy. I'm not endorsing this guy. I'm not endorsing the Boogaloo Boys. I'm not doing any of that. I don't know anything about the Boogaloo Boys. I'm interviewing this guy because I saw him give a speech at the state capitol in Michigan, and he was standing there with a Black Lives Matter person and an LGBT activist. And that's why I'm interviewing this guy. And all I'm doing is interviewing this guy. And so people, of course, want to smear me because at that time, 
I was pushing for force to vote against uh, and exposing the Justice Democrats and the Dem and AOC and the squad. And so they, again, used a smear tactic to make it look like Jimmy Dores. Of, and the reason why I brought him on was because I didn't know anything about the fuck the Boogaloo Boys or the Proud Boys. I thought they were the same. And it turned out the Boogaloo Boys were invented as a counter to the Proud Boys. They, mm -hmm. They're they're anti-racist. They worked with Black Lives Matter. Now, not all of them, but... It's been and it's been documented that they work with the, they provided protection for Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, the mm -hmm. Magnus himself admitted to being uh, gay. He's not gay to not 100 percent straight is what he said. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are anti-cop. They're anti-war. Mm -hmm. So what I try to tell people is that I've been in several unions and the way you organize people is you organize them along common interests and it, you don't show up on the in, on the shop floor and go who here is a proud boy you're out who's here is a burglar boy you're out yeah. who's a libertarian you're out who's a gun nut you're out who voted for trump you're out who's left now we're going to organize against the man that's not how it works so when people mm -hmm. say and you hear a lot of people who call themselves socialists say we have to organize along class lines well, what the fuck do you think that means? That means organizing with fucking Trump voters. That's exactly what that means. Class you solidarity, not left-right solidarity, class. And that's what they can't get through their fucking head. That's how you organize. And the problem with that guy, Magnus, who's a boogaloo boy, uh, uh, is that those are the kind of people who used to vote for Democrats 30 years ago, and they aren't anymore. Because they've been squashed also by the fucking capitalist machine. Those guys are victims of the capitalist machine, just like if that guy's unemployed. He wasn't getting his COVID relief. That, that's why everybody's fucking bringing guns to the Capitol, because their lives are, livelihoods are being taken away from them. So why don't you engage them? And so what I tell people is, what is your message for that guy? That guy says he's pro-Black Lives Matter. He says he's pro-LGBTQ. He's anti-Trump. He's anti-war. You don't have a message for that guy? That's your fuck failure and those are people trying to conflate mm. what was that everybody they want to make you think half the country's racist and so we can't work with them uh the republican party's always been racist uh three out of the last four rnc chair people apologize for the fucking southern strategy they've been doing my whole life so this idea that racism just got invented by trump is fucking crazy and that's what and so they've been working with these motherfuckers joe biden's a racist the people are in fucking prison because of Joe Biden's racism, not because of Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So that's what I say. Nobody who nobody who watched that interview with me doing that interview could criticize me, except that fucking jerk off uh, Jerry from the that's who claims to be a socialist. And I go, what's your message for a guy like Matt? He goes, I don't have a message for him. I go, well, then you don't know how to fucking organize. That's not how organizing works. And that's why nobody ever heard of that guy. Yeah. Uh, that you know, that's just I'm just telling. So if you're going to organize when you go to uh, at, at Occupy Wall Street, did you go and ask somebody, are you a Republican? Are you a Democrat? Are you a libertarian? Are you a socialist? Are you a progressive? Are you a boogaloo? You don't fucking do that. That's not how you organize. Exactly. You go, Here's real. our set. Here's our ideas. Here's our fucking goals. Are, do you share these goals? Do you want to work with us? Let's work. I, hey, that's why Bernie Sanders hooks up with fucking right wingers to uh, to uh, affect end the war in Yemen. It doesn't matter if you're for against ending. If you're for ending the war in Yemen, I'll work with you. It doesn't matter yeah. who the fuck you are. Yeah. You think that it was all lefty liberals who went to fight the Nazis in World War II? Who do you think was there? There's lots of Southern racists over there fighting fucking Hitler and the Nazis. Mm -hmm. uh, just one thing I. I was thinking about, um, you know, it, it's, it's accurate that you have to work with people who uh, you may not agree with. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but one of my friends is actually a Boogaloo boy. Uh, so I'm going to put that out there right now. Um, he knows that I am a socialist. He also knows that I am gay and he loves me like a brother. The thing, though, is, is that a lot of people seem to think that you're advocating for working with white supremacists. Yeah, here's here's, 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 yeah, here, here's the issue. <laughs> if, if it was white supremacists 
here's the thing. White supremacists don't want to work with us. So therefore, it wouldn't happen. Right. Um, so therefore, to say that, you know, you're advocating for socialist policies and things like that, you know, and, you know, and uniting with people who are black, they're not white supremacists. Now, I do have a small pushback on something you said earlier. Okay. You said that the uh, Black Panthers work with white supremacists. That's not entirely accurate because the thing is that the Young Patriots actually were anti-racist. Right. And a lot of the white supremacists that were part of them actually end up leaving when they started right. to work with the, with the Black Panthers. So the Young Patriots were actually anti-racist. So the, the notion of Black Panthers working with white supremacists it doesn't really square. Uh, as so far let me as ask history. you. Let, so, well, so I, okay, fill me in on this. I was always under the impression mm -hmm. that the the Young Patriots were Southern racists, and then when they, Fred Hampton engaged them, uh, eventually they got rid of their Confederate flag and they got rid of their. The, mm -hmm. They shook out the racists of their organization. Yeah. So yeah. wasn't that yeah. wasn't there an evolution? Yeah, the, the, like, yeah. like there was. said, a lot of them. Uh, sorry, JB, I'll I, I let you try my mm -hmm. real quick. Uh, just like just like I said, a lot of those people. The reason why Fred Hampton worked with them because they committed to fighting the racists. That's why right. there. That's why there was a little bit pushback because people say you shouldn't work with people who are still pushing mm -hmm. hardcore racist policy. Yeah. The the, mm -hmm. the only thing I would say, and and Jamie Dore uh, uh, said. Uh, this a little bit mm -hmm. earlier, and, and now pass it right back to you, JB, because you yeah. said mm -hmm. Joe Biden's a racist. So you guys yeah. gotta understand that I what gives you the automatic assumption that I think you're not racist. So I'm giving <laughs> all you, I'm giving all y'all white people the benefit of the doubt. I'm sorry. <laughs> like if I see you work for Medicare for all, because I just said I, I have an op-ed where I wrote in great detail why Medicare for mm -hmm. all is the most pro-black policy. Right? Joe yeah. Biden's denying us that. Joe Biden is locking up us in cages. You got people who think that they got the moral high ground over me. Like, oh, you don't support Joe Biden? They got Black Lives Matter in their profile. I'm like, bro, Joe Biden in his first 100 days deported right. more Haitian immigrants than, Joe, than Donald Trump in his first term. You say you stand for Black Lives, you support the Democratic Party. You say, I don't. You say the people who don't support Joe Biden doesn't. So my assumption, because I see you support Jim Crow Joe, I'm like, he may be racist. He may, may not. So I'm not even assuming, like even the white liberals who got mad at you, I don't know if you're, not, you're racist. So you got to prove it to me. So if I see mm -hmm. someone who's actually willing to sign that Medicaid ballot, like I told you, I'm like, okay, so he's fine for health care for my community. Because a big part of Republican reason why they don't support these socialist policies, they support socialism for the rich. When Jeff Bezos and all their Wall Street homies get bailed out, they're not mad. Mm -hmm. The reason why they're scared of uh, socialist policy because they don't want it to uplift black lives. Because they love exactly. the hierarchy. Joe Biden even said he loved the hierarchy, the fact that his kids can go to good, uh, good schools, but black people can't go to school unless they go into student, uh, student debt. We got we got, we carry the most student debt, and that's the system that Joe Biden want to keep. But you want to say, right. you probably vote Joe Biden who want to keep this system that keeps us down. I can talk about this all day, so I, 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 I'll go to JB. <laughs> but you want to probably this guy who keeps us down with the bankruptcy bill and the crime bill. And then people that think that, Joe, that Donald Trump did more damage to the black community in four years than Joe Biden did in 40. Bro, the crime bill and the bankruptcy bill did more damage to the black community mm -hmm. than anyone else. I dare anyone else to find any public servant that, that, that passed any legislation. That's right. That will get that done. Because Marjorie Taylor Greene is never yeah. going to get that passed. She's That's ineffective. Right. Joe Biden is an effective, smooth politician, despite how he plays. He knows exactly what he's doing. And he gets this mm -hmm. stuff passed. But anyway, JB, I went, I, I need to stop ranting. And we let you go, uh -huh. Jamie. I want to get JB here, and then we uh, see yeah. you off here soon. One point I want to make to and anybody that's watching, liberals can be white supremacists too. Exactly. I want you guys to think about that. Liberals can be white supremacists too. I want you guys to, and, 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 and white supremacists can also be black. Because I want you to look at Candace Owens. I want you to look at Kamala Harris. I want you to look at uh, Tim Scott. I want you to look at all these people. There are some black white supremacists out there as well. And so for you to try to say that uh, liberals, they're not really racist, or you try to, you know, square the circle with uh, thinking that, oh, they're just neoliberal, but they're not white supremacists, wrong. Because if it goes against, because a lot of times they will use a uh, class divide to attack us. Because then they want to use the poor whites as their attack dogs. Yeah. So if you're right. poor and white, are you sick and tired of being used by the elites? 
Yeah. I hope you are. <laughs> and uh, and we're sick and tired of also being attacked. And so let me say this. If you are for, you know, uh, class solidarity, if you're for defunding the police and a road to abolition, if you are for gun rights, not just for white people, for also for black people as well, if you are for rights regarding, uh, you know, uh, LGBTQ, if you're for, you know, getting rid of these for-profit wars, if you're for, you know, people who are immigrants coming into this country to have the right to be able to uh, seek asylum and things like that, and if you want to work with me, okay, but white supremacists don't want to work with me <laughs> because they don't like the, to have right. any unification on those issues. So I, I want to say thank you to, you know, Jimmy Dore uh, for, for giving me that clarification because I was a little nervous about that. And, I, and I'm going to be real with you. I don't yeah. watch your show. I don't watch your show. <laughs> it's okay. I'm going to be real because the thing is, is that um, I just never took the time to do it. And part of it is because, You're, well, you know, there's sometimes people will say things and it kind of gets into your brain. And it's like, well, should I, shouldn't I? I don't, I don't know. And talking to you, you seem like a fairly reasonable guy. I mean, there's going to be things where we disagree on, but for the most part, you know, I think we agree on a lot. I, the, the thing that, uh, caught my ear was that I was I thought the Boogaloo Boys was just like the Proud Boys and when that guy gave a speech and he said that uh, we have more in common than we have that keeps us apart and when he said he wasn't racist and he wasn't uh, he was against the wall I was like wow well this seems I, I think I need to interview this guy is this real and mm -hmm. so I brought him on and mm -hmm. uh, again I gave the disclaimer that I don't endorse anything I don't endorse any group I'm just interviewing this guy Okay. You know, and I that's you, what Jimmy because sorry to interrupt you but let me just say this one thing because I talked to my friend CJ for another co-host on Fred Hampton left this he was like I didn't even know who they was either and I'm and I once again I got I once again, I got in trouble with that like y'all want to work with anyone I know possible but one thing I want to add and I we don't know these people I don't I like I barely know the Proud Boys so not everyone is super well researched on all these groups so that's why I didn't that why I wasn't upset and some people got mad at me because I wasn't upset. I'm like, I just legitimately don't care. I got other, I got way bigger fish, fish to fry than this. Like, like the, mm -hmm. the last thing I'm worried about is some what some comedians are saying. And I, I watch the shows. I usually know where you where you stand at. Uh, mm -hmm. Rome, I know Rome. He's another person in our group, the Fred Hampton leftist. He actually did a one hour and fifteen minute live stream where he broke down an interview because this is when a lot of people were talking about it. And Rome mostly agree. I don't want to say put words in his mouth. But I remember watching that live stream. Like, yeah, a lot of people need watch this, actually. He broke down my interview? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll really? That's great. Like, yeah. Oh, I'd uh, love to see it. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to put any, your, any words in your mouth, Rome. I'm going out based on what I believe. But he broke it down. Like, yeah, I, because I, Rome's stance is, yeah, I work with anyone, too. Like, this is this is our stance. Is like, because if you push in these issues that's, uh, that actually affect the black community, because the people who get upset, sorry, sorry I'll let you go over here, here Jimmy. But it's, it's funny. Uh, cause I got a lot of criticism of the progressives. That's why I don't. Call, I don't really don't call them that much because it's the progressives. The same people who got mad at you for that is apologizing for white progressives, prominent ones who said the N word in 2019. <laughs> While Trump is in office, you got white leftists who are saying the N word and being openly racist. They said they, we should colonize Africa. That came from the discord. But you wagging your finger at Jimmy Dore for talking to a guy he wasn't 100 percent aware of, which I say is believable. And I and I end you, I'll give you the last word and and you can plug what you anything you want to plug after this last thought. As a black American, and this is what shocked the liberal consciousness. My friend, we don't know CJ didn't know who the Boogaloo Boy was because do you think I'm afraid of the Boogaloo Boy or the Proud Boys? I I am around a ton of Latinos and Black Americans. Kansas City is one of the highest black rate, about uh, literally three times higher than the national average. Surrounded by Black people and Latinos. This is, we never bring up the Boogaloo Boys and the Proud Boys. It's not a thing. We're not discussing it. <laughs> this is only a part, a small part of the liberal bubble. That, that's, this is the right. thing that people talk about. You know who we are afraid of? The police. The police. That's we, right. We're driving. The oh, there's a cop over there. There's a cop. Oh, all we, we worry about the bank is going to rip us off. That's right. I'm telling them white progressives, get your priorities straight. Because you don't understand what we are actually worried about. And this is you're, a, you're, Go ahead, Jimmy. I, I'm sorry, I went too long. What, no, that's what I try to tell word. people. 
you're, the, the, that that people like Magnus and you have common enemy, and that common common enemy is Wall Street. That common enemy is Aetna and Blue Cross. That common enemy is Exxon. That common enemy is Raytheon. You guys have common enemy. Your enemy isn't a fucking another guy who's broke dick living in a fucking trailer. That's not your fucking enemy. <laughs> let me give, let me say one more thing, Jim, because you just, you just, you, that's such a good point. Because there was actually was a viral tweet. I, I, I apologize. I'll drop apologize. But there was a viral tweet on Black Twitter that said, and I agree with it. It went viral at that time. And this is what the Black community has been saying for a while. They said it's not our job to convince white people not to be racist. It's not our job. It's our job to advocate for our community. It's white people's job to convince white people to not be racist. So, so if you're a white person and you disavow your family member who's racist, you're actually being a coward and you're not helping our community. It's uncomfortable. But what you're supposed to do is have the conversation and drag the people to the right. And that, in a nutshell, is why I wasn't mad. Because if I got mad at you for talking to the Boogaloo boys, that would be inherently contradictory, right? Because I don't want to talk to them. I, I don't want to talk to the Boogaloo boys. I don't want to talk to anyone who has extreme racist ideology. It's white people's job to do that. So why would I get mad at you for talking to them if I have that belief? And that tweet went <laughs> yeah. viral on Black, on Black Twitter. So a lot of Black <laughs> people agree with that. And now, and they won't get upset with you talking to racist. I'm like, didn't we say it's white people's job to, to convince people not to be racist? I'm not going to do it. But you there's should, white people should. You know, what I try to tell people is uh, there's racists in my family. I, I got a big family. A lot of racists in my family. What am I supposed to do, Scott? But what you do is you always engage. I mean, I grew up in a racist neighborhood, right? In Chicago. It was all fucking racists and cops. And uh, uh, I used to, I remember. They, uh, my, some people would say to me, uh, some white people would say, you know, Jimmy, I'm not racist, but you know, when those black guys act like that, it just brings it out in me. That's what they would say. They would say shit like that. Like, when they wow. act like that, it brings it out in me, right? And I would go, well, you know what they say, circumstances don't make the man, they reveal him. That's so right. if you feel like there's a, they're bringing it out, they're revealing who you are. You're yeah. reading that you're, and they don't, because no one wants to think of themselves as being small minded, petty, or racist. I'm not a racist, just those asshole, right? <laughs> so I would kind of hold the mirror up to them, like, no, that's actually who you are. And that's who I grew up with, right? That's who everybody I knew for the first 30 years of my life was like that. So uh, well, it, 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 you need to, this idea that you shouldn't platform, this idea of the, the platforming has become a toxic word. Uh, I don't believe it. That's all bullshit. You, I grew up watching Phil Donahue interview the KKK and fucking David Duke. And you, 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 you don't uh, you just give people more power by pretending uh, you engage them. You either you engage them to expose them or you engage them to expose them to your ideas. That's, and that's, that's what a lot of people I mm. because I'm critical of the Democratic Party. A lot of self-described conservatives watch my show and I've turned them right. They've like, oh, I didn't think I. Uh, I thought this way, but now I get it. I get what you say about cops. I get what you say about the foreign wars. I get what you said now and the, and the healthcare for all. And they start to see, they start to turn. And mm. that's what, that that used to be this gold standard for lefties. If you could get people over to your side, that's what you're supposed to, you're supposed to have a message. You're supposed yeah. to have a message for people. And that's what I have. I have a message for people. We have a common enemy. Our common enemy is Wall Street, healthcare, military industrial complex. Your enemy isn't someone else who's a broke dick just like you. Somebody else is driving around in a fucking 15 year old car. That's not your enemy. Somebody who's uh, broke, who's out of job, who doesn't have a work, who doesn't have health care. Somebody who's got medical bankruptcy. Somebody who's got student debt. Those are not your fucking enemies. We should be, but they want to separate us. And that's exactly how they do it. By you platform the wrong, you talk to the wrong person. You didn't to fuck off. I will talk to anybody I want to talk to at any time. I'll talk to any other American at any time. And what bothers them is they can't stop me. I don't have a boss. I don't have a manager that they can complain to. I don't have somebody I'm trying to get a job from. And that's what drives them fucking crazy. So the biggest people who are my biggest critics are shit lit Joe Biden supporters. That's yeah. who fucking come at me. And they pretend that they care exactly. about racism as they're voting for the biggest fucking racist who was ever president. Our, our, enemy, is, our enemy is capitalism. Yep, Jimmy Dore. I, I appreciate your, your patience um, and your willingness to okay. stay on a little bit longer. We appreciate you coming on. And it says a lot because I had this com conversation with Sabrina Savs. There is a lot of frustration with very popular uh, leftist white people who are very popular and they like pull the ladder up and they don't, like they'll bring a, a popular left white leftist to talk about black issues. 
So you coming on and, and uh, help elevate our voices, it means a lot. And it says a lot to your commitment to Black History. So I do appreciate you coming on. And um, anyone watching, um, stay in. I'm going to answer some questions in the chat that you guys have. Uh, but Jimmy Dore, where can they find you? Last words you have before we send you off. Uh, JimmyDoreComedy.com is my website. I'll see you there. Thank you, Jimmy. Have a great right, day.